Hi guys, so today I'm going to try out these new items that Diamond Press brought to HSN for the um, May craft day. And um, I thought these would pair it well together just from the descriptions and things. We have the Diamond Press mini slimline backgrounds called Flowers. And this is the die and stamp kit called Cottage Garden. So let's check these guys out. So Diamond Press did send these items free of charge from our review and of course all opinions are my own. And any links in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchased items to those links. So thanks for using those if you can. How cute already. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'll measure these in just a moment. Super like three different backgrounds as far as I can see here and then some sentiments so we'll check that out and let's see what cottage garden holds it sounds very cute <laughs> I like the name of that one let's see <clears throat> aww <laughs> like a little tree possibly or you know what? oh maybe mushrooms let's check this guy out if that's the case that is very cottagey very cottage core as they call it nowadays um, so I'm going to check this out. Let's open this one up first so we can look at the inspo and then I'll go through the stamps and the dies. So we have a really pretty like um, kind of a wreath shape with the beautiful kind of vining uh, effect there and then you have a die that goes with it which is great. Um, a little bunch of mushrooms and there's a die to go with that little family there too. And then we have like an individual mushroom with like some little leaves, uh, flower sprig, oh my gosh a snail. Uh, just this morning I was uh, explaining to Miranda the difference because she always thinks uh, um, you know slugs or baby snails <laughs> so we were talking about that um we have like a uh, moth i guess maybe kind of uh, animal there or insect should i say then we have a little frog and then another butterfly or moth type and those all have dyes so stamp in a die these all appear to also have stamps and dyes um or dyes that have like texture down here so uh, we have a B, a B that's sideways, and like a little flourish. Um, oh yeah, ooh, it's a fancy mushroom, there you go. And then a little cute little bird. And then these guys are like just accent pieces that are like little like blades of grass and sprigs and leaves and little flowers. And then sentiments, so stay wild. Oh, I love that. A little note to say hello, you are beautiful inside and out. And just a fun way to um, style those down here with the inspo. How cute. So let's see these guys. Again, cutting folder for the marquee, but these thin metal dies will go through any machine that cuts thin metal dies. And so there we have our dies. The largest one, again, is that center, that big kind of uh, wreath. It's like two, eh, almost three inches. I would say probably two and three quarters ish, you know, and then everything else is about that size or smaller, right? Um, so hopefully that gives you some idea. So those are the dies. And these are the stamps. I love the colorway on this stamp. So pretty. Um, a little note to say hello. Snail mail is my love language. <laughs> it's so cute. Stay wild. And again, with all kinds of flourishes and those beautiful butterflies or moths, or however you want to style them. Super cute. Little mushrooms. And I thought that would pair with this because this is so you know, like because this has like motif kind of looks to it, right? Designs and you can cut them out. So I thought. Why do we care with this? So we have the backgrounds, right, for them. So let's check this out. And again, it comes with a cutting folder for the marquee. And how cute is this one with all the little dots? Oh my gosh, the little flowers here. I'll give you a measurement in just a moment, but this is the kind of design that you'll see from them. I might run all of them through just so um, you can see what those look like in real life. And then we have best day ever, enjoy the day, thanks so much, and here to brighten your day. How cute are those? And you know, you can just make simple cards with layers and your sentiment, of course. Um, really cute. Okay, so the metal to metal, again, these all clearly fit in the marquee. Um, metal edge to metal edge, they're three and three eighths inches wide, but it looks like it'll cut a matte layer that's three and a quarter. And on the other end, it is um, just shy of six inches tall, and it looks like it'll cut something that's five and three quarters. So three and a quarter by five and three quarters, um, which is really great because the way I make many some lines, at least my standard for that, um, some sometimes people call them pocket uh, cards or however, is three and a half by six. So this definitely is a quarter inch smaller all around, you know, eighth of an inch here and there and there. 
quarter inch uh, smaller on either side of that so that's gonna be really great so what I'm gonna do is grab some papers we'll run all of them through so you can see what they look like and then um, we'll do something with the cottage garden as like toppers and things so I'll be right back I should trim these down so I have some papers here we definitely want the trim down so they can fit you know in our marquee here so let's go ahead and just do this like four inches wide that'll work I'll leave the length of that one and this one Let's also go about four inches wide, and that'll be from this bottom portion, and this guy too. Okay, I'm going to tell you this California Super Bloom <laughs> is so bad. Gorgeous, but it's so bad <laughs> on allergies and everything. Um, okay. So if I make some several pauses, it's basically because of that. Um, okay, so I have this guy, and he is very cute. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's run through this yellow one. So I think today I'm going to use the like this um, kind of sagey, minty green. I know those are different things, but it's just a very soft green that's not quite mint, not quite sage. Um, for the flower one, and we'll use that for the... Um, the card I want to use today so with that cottage set so again whenever I have this I'm tilting as much as I can just so when the rollers hit they're not hitting a straight line all at once it kind of goes here and then comes down and of course I can trim my paper down a little bit smaller and I can get more of a tilt but for now that's all I'm doing and let's get that going and I'm doing it very slowly just to not shake my camera but you can just crank them out <laughs> all right Oh my goodness. How cute. Just a couple in there, but like butter. And you have two little apertures there. That's really cute. So there's that guy. And these are all different thicknesses of paper. This one's kind of like probably 85 pound paper. This one might be a little thinner than that. And this one's like 300 GSM. So just so you know that info. So let's try this guy. And I'm just going to shake everything off of here. Now I do take them off, although, I mean, if you just run it through and leave these little bits there, they might impress themselves or imprint their shape on your paper, so you definitely want to clear those guys out. And then like this time, maybe I'll run it on this side of my paper, of the um, folder, excuse me. So there it is. I just want to make sure I'm hitting. Okay. Oh yeah, my allergies are <laughs> acting up. I have itchy eyebrows. <laughs> That's not common. <laughs> Something I experience often. <laughs> All right, let's get this guy out of here. And he is very, very fine. So I'm gonna use this. And um, there's little ejectors like right in the corner for the item itself, and then everything else. I mean, it's clearing out. So if yours is in there you can just use those ejectors i'm going to take a moment to clean this guy out but when i come back i'll show you all three of them so of course i'll clean that guy out look at that so we just have a few bits that we need to clear out and then oh i'm making a bigger mess aren't i you know what let me <laughs> go ahead and clean that one out clear everything up and then we'll run our last one through so we have those two cleaned out cleaned it around here just a little bit and we will run this guy through super cute Okay, <clears throat> and you know, I'll just run it through the same side, another side, turn it around, run it through the other side, however, I just like to kind of mix it up and really use up my folders, okay. Yeah, I'm going slowly. Aw, this is so cute. I know we have the squares from earlier too. You want to hold on to these things or even this shape maybe later you want to pop it back in and you have like a white frame or something so i'll hold on to those for a bit here and then what i think i'm going to do is probably stamp one of the cottage things and then run it through here anyway so i get the negative basically like that little part so or we can just put the whole topper huh hmm think about it okay really pretty i mean look at that this one has like a little stitching so cute. Okay, I'm gonna clean up and then we'll look at them and we will move on. So these are our beautiful backgrounds. How cute are those for mini slim lines? Again, just different weights of paper. I just wanna show you kind of what that looks like. Oh, they all have stitching around the little aperture openings. Hopefully you can see that there. 
And so what I'm going to do is make a uh, card base. Now, I have card bases of like just a ton of them, right? That are just in my stash. Like, this is a 5x7 that opens at the top. I thought that was really cute. So, even if we have it open this way, we can definitely do that. But now I'm like, huh, maybe I'll orient it this way and have it open this way. So, why not? So, I'm just going to take this and cut it down. And even the white pieces that are left that I, you know, um, cut off of here, you can stamp on it. You can. Uh, then cut it down, you know, maybe trim it down or use a die or whatever, but maybe stamp a sentiment on it, right? That's what white paper is good for. So I'm going to put this in here and again at three and a half. So I'm just going to go over to three and a half. Um, by six. I don't know why I was thinking about it so much. I was like, is that what I'm doing? <laughs> yes, it is. Three and a half by six. And how pretty is that? Love the little matte layer. Now, if I'm going to put something behind here, I'm probably just going to go ahead and trim it down now because this is going to be white paper, you know, with my stamping and coloring. So um, it looks really pretty and clean. And honestly, I mean, if you wanted to stamp on there and color, I would use like color pencil, something that's not going to bleed through to the back, right? But um, I'm going to cut down a piece of paper to layer this. Um, and again, it's three and a quarter by five and three quarters. So I'll cut down a piece of paper that's just a little smaller than three and a quarter by five and three quarters. That way, when I put it back here, it's not like trying to stick out in the other edges. And um, okay, I'll be right so back. I have my card base that opens this way. Something a little bit different. That little piece that's a little bit smaller than three and a quarter and a little bit smaller than five and three quarters in the other direction. And it's just some script paper that I happen to have in my stash. I like those colors together. And I am just going to glue those together. So... I guess I could have stuck the other one down to the card base first, but I want to make sure that they layer into each other here in a good way before I do that. So I'm just putting glue here and there, obviously in the larger areas, and then just maybe in the center of the flowers as well as I can, anywhere where there's a little extra paper. And then this guy here. I'm going to hold those together, and then I'll just put glue and layer it on here. Okay, and that is what my card base is looking like. Very pretty. I love the textures of that. This is just, again, alcohol ink marker uh, paper, and I'm just going to stamp a couple things. So really, I just want, uh, let's see, like this guy for my focal point. And whenever we have this die, we're just really cutting out this little spot, you know? So, just giving myself some room all around. And then I also want to cut a little frog, I think, or a little something. So I like the way the frog is facing, so that'll work for my purposes here. So we're going to cut this little guy out. Get the die. So for now, I'll just use that, and I need hybrid ink so I can use my alcoholic markers. Actually, I'm hmm, probably not going to use alcoholic markers. That's interesting. I didn't think about that. I think I'm going to use some watercolor ones just to make it a little more natural, you know, something. <laughs> so, very interesting. The paper is going to react a little bit differently. It'll be fine. You just don't want to, you know, load it up with the water. But of course, you can definitely use watercolor paper. And again, acrylic stamps, just some firm, even pressure. I'm not like pushing down super hard on any one area. I'm going to put a little up there. Very pretty. Oh, I was going to say, I think I'm missing that little bit of mushroom over here on this side. There it is. All right, well, I'm going to let that dry either way. And uh, we'll do some coloring, and then we'll cut them out. And uh, I'll be right back. So we have our card base. I stamped those things out. Um, I just put them on this little uh, glass mat that, if you haven't seen my video, um, is now available on mydiamondpress.com. And with them, I do have an affiliate discount code that will be in the description box. But basically, it's the code VCDP, and you can get 10% off their site. The other items I'm showing you are in HSN. Okay, so I have um, the links for both in the description box. Um... I think to make this pop a little more, we're going to make orange-ish colored um, mushrooms. Like, why not? So I'm just going to clean this off. It. I'm telling you, I use the same paper towel until it's no more. Uh, but let's start 
with the little mushroom kind of stem. So I'm just going to get these water-based markers, any water-based marker would do. And I'm just going to grab some of that color and just blend it out. I'm not going to touch that anymore because, again, this is not watercolor paper. And I really want to come back and just pull some of this color out, and it's just adding more and more. So, again, just very light. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Let me bring this down. I know that color is very light. Hopefully I did that slowly enough to not cause anybody any kind of vertigo <laughs> or any kind of headache. There we go. And I mean, even the color that I still have on here, which was not a lot, is what I'm using. And I put down a lot of that color. I thought I was going to use a lot of it. I don't know. So now I'm going to take some of that and just kind of blend out a little more of it. Uh, just a little bit more there. And you know what? Let's do the underneath of these guys in that same kind of tone. That way I don't waste that little bit of ink that I had put there. Oh my goodness. Okay. These guys can be different colors than those guys. They are a little bit different looking in style. Um, let me go ahead and finish up this other part. So pine forest the green sounds good to me and I can put it right next to that color I just used because they can mix together. It's not a big deal. Oh my goodness, that is very close up. I just realized hopefully my whole hand wasn't in the way. Um, so with this guy, I did wipe a little bit of color off over here on this napkin. I usually start, and I guess we can turn this, so you don't have to keep it in one direction. Um, just starting at the very base to have like some, here we go, some shading. So I start down here, start down here, and then I'm just going to wipe a little bit of that off and just bring the color out. That is a kind of a bluey green, very interesting. And a little more up here. Just trying to make sure we're still in frame because it's such a tight shot. Sorry, I'm not used to that. And bring it out there. It's an interesting green. Let's get a little more. Yeah, just a little touch of color here and there. Where did I put it here? And yeah, that's good for right now. And then we still have like some other greenery. Again, I'm just going to take a little scribble of this. And that can be the blades of grass. So starting at the base, pulling that up. Whoop. Did that one a little messier than I would like. And out this way. And there we go. Any other ones? It looks like that's all the grass. Okay. So I'm going to wipe this off because now I don't want green in this. Um, let me put these back where they work. So I like to keep my markers roughly in order. That goes there. Okay, uh, let's use this kind of pinky orange. Whoop, there goes that lid. And again, I'm just gonna put some color down. Take that guy, start at the top, and bring that color down. And very cute. And then as my pen, or my water brush, gets less and less color, that's fine, I want that. And then maybe I'll come back in here and add a little more like that. That's all I'm looking for. So on this one, same thing. A little darker here. We are giving the illusion of sunlight hitting one spot and not the other. And just a little darker there. And you can leave some spots a little bit white, right? That's the whole fun of it. Um, these little guys down here, maybe like I said, maybe I'll make them a different color. Let's try a little bit of yellow. Yeah, there's a little something fun. And I'm just taking a little bit of that yellow and just popping it here and there. <laughs> the other day somebody left a comment on a video I had made a long time ago of some soup. Um, and the lady said, I have a very Bob Ross style of <laughs> how I do things. And I was like, huh, maybe. A little laid back, huh? Okay. Um, oh, you know what? We can take some green. Mm, mm, mm. What green do I want to use? The other one was too... Let's take a little bit of that and just pop some down here. All right, just kind of flush it out. And if you really wanted to, I mean, you can take some blue and put it up the top. But again, look, it was starting to pick up because this is marker paper. Definitely not watercolor paper. So I'll just leave that. And then my little guy, I was thinking about making him blue or something fun. Um, but that's more of like a frog from like the forest. Not the forest, but like the jungle, no? So maybe we're just going to go green with him. Um, let's see. I guess this is a good green to start with. Maybe I'll give him some accent colors. 
but let's get some of that green and really just kind of building up the color so I'll put some more up here and just kind of bring it down this way a lot of times they have kind of like little white underbellies don't they so let me just do a little something fun like that his little leg in the back um, maybe his little arms down here can be a little more green just a little more color and then let's get oh you know what the back of his eye you see the back of this eye let's go ahead and get that nice and green and I left some of this kind of open because I think I'm gonna bring in like a very pale color kind of like what I did with the mushrooms I guess this very light light color and just put some in there and put some under here and just kind of fade it out just so it's a little more white kind of bone color okay I'm gonna let those dry and then when we come back we will uh, die cut these okay my friends so what I'm going to do is take this guy ah. <laughs> that little cover there thank goodness I remember to bring that back up instead of having such a tight shot so I'm going to die cut this and again whatever you know makes it look nice and organic I mean I can bring it down here but I think that's a good spot okay I'm gonna trim this down just a little bit to get this away from our froggy okay and I think I'm just gonna hold on to that when I run it through so I'll run this through um, and then this guy let me see the die for him I think I'm gonna make an aperture so I know exactly where I'm die cutting so I'm just going to make this so that we can hinge that and then run it through and then once that's run through that piece will fall out right and then we just open it up like this use the area that's cut out to see where he's at put it back down and run it through and we should have a nice um, die cut so I'll be right back so like I said use that to make a little guiding like window there and then you just kind of see where your little frog is put it down make sure it's stays where you put it and run it through and I have a really nice um, edge on him and I did say I was gonna make this this way I think so there we have that and we have like a little frog here so sweet okay let me clean up a little bit and then we'll add a sentiment and I'll bear so back. I have this cutie and I think for this one I'm gonna do thanks so much um, and I'm gonna run it through some gold paper but I'm also gonna run it a couple times through just some white paper just so I can have a little thickness and make it a little sturdier okay so I'll be right back I probably should just clean this one out before I came back, but we're going to get this off of here. It's very delicate. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Pop that guy out. And basically, I'm just going to layer these guys together. So I'll start with the white ones. I have two from the same paper I used for this. So it's a nice heavyweight paper. And since these guys are pretty delicate, I'm going to put some glue on the back of my hand and kind of let my glue bottle... Uh, spread that out a little bit and so oh, <laughs> we're just going to take that dip 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 and layer onto this one and I usually start like on the left side and kind of coax it over to make sure we're layering that up pretty nicely oh, very good there 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 and then I'll do the same thing with the gold one just dip 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 and then layer it up over this one okay I'll be right back so we have our sentiment let's go ahead and glue this guy down you can definitely put some dimension on that if you would like or even this um, bottom part I would just cut it out several times out of white paper and pop it on there I don't have this guy like this yep I'm gonna hold that down and then this guy I'm gonna put some dimensionals on him but in the meantime I'm also gonna put this right there so I'm just gonna put a little more glue on the back of my hand I get that guy ready to go and popping that right there so I'm gonna hold these all down and then get some dimensionals on this one look how pretty that is I love it I love how soft and just earthy love the whole feel of that and then we'll put our little guy like right here oh my goodness <laughs> There it is. Thank you so much, Diane Press, for saying these items for review. I'm just loving uh, the design of all of that. So cute to the cottage set. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll have images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box. And I'll see you all at the next one. Bye now.